Hi, my name is Brandon Yelts from the implementation team and today we're going to be talking about workflow. So what a workflow within SalesPad can be used for is allows a company to create you know, logic um, around you know, how a document moves through their process as in you know, when an order has been received um, or when the user's um, inputting an order for a customer, when that order is moved, moved out to the warehouse to be picked or fulfilled, when that's moving through the shipping process, and you know when that order is being transferred to an invoice. So if I go to the setup slash utilities tab, under there you'll notice there's an option for workflow setup. So before we go into workflow setup, I want to talk about the security around the workflow screen. So I'm going to go to the admin menu and click security editor. And then I'm just going to filter in here for workflow setup or workflow for that matter. So there's really no sub settings around these screens. It's just does the group have access to workflow setup and workflow rule setup. Workflow setup is an admin function. Um, so I would suggest only having you know your admin or your higher level security groups um, allow them access to it. Now I've talked security on the workflow setup screen. Now I want to open workflow setup. And I can do that by clicking the setup slash utilities tab and then clicking on the workflow setup button. Now when I click on that button, you'll notice that it opens up the workflow setup screen. So there's a few different sections to this screen. On the left side, we have all the different documents um, that are set up within GP. So these are different, not only document types, so we have all the invoices, but also the IDs associated with those types. What it means when there's an asterisk next to the specific document ID is that there's actual workflow set up already for that document ID. So you'll notice some of the blank ones don't have any. And so we're going to be generating or creating a brand new workflow today. So I'm going to click on one of the blank documents. The next step is setting up my actual workflow queues. So you'll notice sometimes I'll say workflow queues or I'll say workflow batches. They are the same thing when I'm referring to both of those. So if I want to create a brand new queue for this BLK order workflow, and so when I click on that new queue button here, it's going to start my first um, queue for this workflow. And so I can just click in this field and type what I want my first batch or what I want my first queue to be. And so what that means is when I create a brand new BLK order within SalesPad and I save it, that's the name of the batch that it's going to save to or the, the name of the queue that that's going to save to. So typically what I'll see is something like new order or some people do like new BLK ORD. It's really the customer's preference, but I'm going to do new order here. And when I tab through, I'll go over some of these options that we have here. So what button caption is used for is when I want to move the, the sales document or my order from the new order queue to the next batch in the workflow, what the user will see as the button caption. So a lot of the times what you'll see is our customers will do something like release or some people will do forward. Again, up to the customer's personal preference. And once I have my workflow defined, I'll show you how those those fields look. Tabbing through you'll see is a print checkbox. So if I check this, what that means is when I release my new order, before it goes to the next queue that I set up, it'll actually pop up the print dialog screen and give the user the ability to print you know, an order confirmation or email a document. Um, again, really their preference, but it's, it's giving them that reminder that they need to print something. What the plugin option is used for is when a document is actually released out of the new order batch, you can have it automatically run one of our many sales pad plugins. To understand what each of these plugins do, you can look up the documentation on them. So I'm not going to get into too much detail on that, but this plugin, if, if one is chosen through workflow, it'll run that plugin before it moves to the next queue. So a lot of the times you'll see our customers, they'll use, um, for example, sales document splitting is, is a very popular one. 
Um, another one we have is the smart printing. So if you wanted to automatically email or automatically print a document when it's released out, um, that's a that's a very popular plugin that's used as well. So you have a couple options there in the plugin section. <clears throat> Eval, I'll talk about a little bit later, but that's uh, going to be associated with our workflow rules down below here. Next queue, what that is used for is the next batch within workflow that this document's going to go to. So what I'm going to do today is set up a basic workflow that I've set up for you know a few of my customers in the past and um, define a few workflow rules for that as well. So my next queue, I'm going to choose or type in ready to pick here. And so what that means is when I have an order, a new order, someone clicks the release button, it'll move it to my ready to pick batch. And then I need to define my ready to pick batch here as well. So it goes from ready to pick. When they've clicked the picked button, that means that the document is ready to move to the ready to ship batch. And once it's in ready to ship, They've shipped my order and it's ready to invoice. And ready to invoice, I'm going to transfer an order to an invoice out of that batch. So <clears throat> your last batch within your workflow, you don't have to select anything or type anything in this next queue section. So this is my basic workflow that I have here. Now I want to set up some workflow rules and this is going to have me create some additional queues as well. So if I want to set up a new workflow rule for this workflow that I've defined, we're going to go down to the workflow rule section below. And I'm going to click new rule here. And once I do that, I can double click in this description field. And this is going to pull up the workflow rule setup screen. And so this is where I can create my rules that are associated with this workflow. So in the description field, this is what I want my user to see if this workflow rule hits. So for example, customer is over credit limit. So I want to create a rule that when a customer is over their credit limit and they try to release it out of the new order batch, it moves to a credit hold batch for one of my AR people to review. So I type in my description there. Evaluate when. So what that means is when a document is released out of a batch, this workflow rule will be evaluated. So when I, if I type in new order here, that means that anytime a document is released out of the new order batch, this rule will be evaluated. I haven't actually defined my credit hold batch yet, but you can still type it in here um, before you actually set up that credit hold batch or credit hold queue. And if you want to, you know, you can do multiple queues in here, as you can see, I can type a semicolon in between both of these. And so now this rule will fire if a document is released out of the new order or the credit hold batch. Rule sequence, the importance of this rule. So, you know, in this scenario, I only have one rule set up, so we'll just leave this as zero. What the apply hold field can be used for is if you have a GP predefined hold set up, you can actually have the workflow rule apply a hold to that document. So if I release a document out of the new order batch and the customer's over the credit limit, it'll move it to the credit hold batch and apply a credit hold. And so move to queue, what that means is if this rule applies, what batch or what queue do we want to move it to? So in my scenario, I'm going to choose credit hold. Okay. So I've defined, you know, kind of my kind of my main information about my rule, but I actually need to set up the rule conditions around it. And in order to do that, I can click the new button. And if I click condition ID, you'll notice that we do have some um, options available here. These are all the workflow rule conditions that we have that come with SalesPad. Now, some of these you'll notice. Um, you know, if you're looking in your system, you might not have some of these. And that's because I've created custom workflow rules in my system. So if that is something you're interested in, you can talk with your sales rep and they should able, be able to 
um, you know, get you the right resource and, and, how, and how to create actual custom workflow rules. Um, but for my rule, so this is for the customers over their credit limit, we have a rule called credit limit. And if I choose that and tab off, you'll see that it'll populate this description field telling you what that rule would be used for. So this rule will hit when the customer has exceeded their credit limit. And lastly, I just need to click the enabled button, this enabled checkbox here, and hit OK. So now I have my workflow rule for the customer credit limit defined. <clears throat> so I need to go back and actually create my credit hold batch because it doesn't exist right now in my workflow. And I can do that by just, again, going up to click new queue and typing in credit hold. My button caption, I'm going to type in approved there. And if it's been approved, then I'm going to allow it to be ready to pick. You'll notice when I created this credit hold batch, it adds it to the end. Um, for me, I like to set it up or change the sequence of this so it's a little easier on the eyes and for me to actually see how the document moves through. So if I change my sequence, it's 50 right now, but if I change it anywhere in between this 10 and 20, so I can just type in like 15, and when I tab off or click off, you'll notice that it moves credit hold up at the top here. And the last thing I need to do in order for this rule to run, that's what this eval checkbox is for. So since eval is checked right here, that means it'll evaluate any workflow rules that exist down below for that batch. So since I have new order highlighted here, that means I need to click the eval checkbox for the new order queue. So same thing for the credit hold batch. Since I have credit hold down here, I need to click this eval checkbox right here in order for the workflow rules to run for the credit hold batch. And so that's how I set up my credit limit workflow rule. Now there are a few other uh, different types of rules that we can set up within our workflow. So maybe when I'm um, releasing out of my new order batch, and I wanna check and see if any line items are back ordered. So I'm gonna create a new rule here and I'm going to call it document contains back ordered item. I want that to evaluate when it's a new order and I want it to move to a, a batch called back order. Back ordered, we'll just go with that. So now under my rule conditions, if I go to condition ID, you'll notice we have a back ordered item one as well. And so that really just checks to see if any line item on the document has been back ordered. So this rule at the top, you know, is checking really if any customers over their credit limit, more of a customer rule where this one is checking any of the line items on the document. So I define my, my rule, my backordered item rule here, and I need to just make sure I create my backordered batch here as well. So same thing, backordered, release, ready to pick. I can do something like 17. Again, just kind of puts it up there, makes it a little, little easier to understand. And if I hit that resequence cues button, you'll see that it'll uh, just resequence those cues now. Now we also have some options that if you want to verify specific information on the order itself, like um, the total, for example. So maybe I want to create a rule that if a document is over $10,000, it needs to be approved, like a manager approval. So I can go to new rule here, and again, just double click in there, and put in a description for my rule. Need manager approval, we'll say. Evaluate when, it's a new order, and we're gonna call our batch MGR approval. Keep in mind when you are creating queues or workflow batches that we do respect GP's uh, batch or queue length. So if you are creating one, it can only be 15 characters long. So now I want to create or you know choose my, my condition for if my document is greater than $10,000. So if I click the new button here under condition ID, we have an option on here that's called sales document field equals or sales doc field equals. Click on that 
when I tab off, you'll see that it gives a description and it tells you what syntax that you need to use. Now on our website, in our workflow uh, documentation, it'll tell you every single field that you can use. The easiest way I know is if you pull up our, any of our views, like so for example, the sales document field, if I pull up our, uh, our view SPV3 sales document, the field name for that exists within that view is going to be whatever you see within here. So you can use, for example, I could do sd.total for sales document and then just greater than 10,000. Same thing, I just need to enable that. <clears throat> now let's say, so let's say for my customers over the credit limit rule that if they're over their credit limit, yeah, that's fine, but they also need to be part of a customer class. So you can do multiple rules within one workflow rule. So I can click new here again, click that drop down, and we also have a customer field equals. And so I could do like something like the lines of C dot customer class equals prospect. So if the customer's over their credit limit and the customer class is prospect, then move it to credit hold. So if you are setting up multiple condition IDs, it's not an or, it's an and. So that's always something good to keep in mind when you are creating workflow rules. And we'll hit OK there. And once I'm done setting up my workflow, the main thing I want to do is click the Save button here. Users don't have to be logged out and logged back in for workflow to take effect. Um, I always like to have the users log out just because you know the functionality around it can be changed or they could be in a document when you're making it. It's, it's always a lot cleaner if they are log, logged out of the system and logged back in. All right. So if we want to see my workflow in action here, I'm just going to exit out of this. And I'm going to pull up a customer. Choose Alt Manufacturing here. And now if I go up to my order, and I'm going to choose that BLK order. So you'll see, even before I start creating my sales document, it's going to save in that new order batch. And that's the release button I was referring to. So if I go, just going back to workflow setup, you'll see new order batch, my button captions release. Thank you for watching our video on workflow setup within SalesPad.